Hi everyone, Talara here, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition and the final DLC, Trespasser. We're here at the Winter Palace two years after the defeat of Corypheus. We spent last episode catching up with all of our old companions, which was really awesome and in some places absolutely hilarious. Now it's time to get to business, and we need to go speak with the ambassadors. We have the Orlesian ambassador and the Ferelden ambassador to speak to. So, let's head up these stairs, and it looks like they're up here somewhere, and chat with them. Alright, first up- oh, it's Arl Tegan! Cool, that must be the Freldon Ambassador. Divine Victoria, am I interrupting? Of course not, Inquisitor. Oh, cool! I was catching up with Redcliffe's arm. It's our first time seeing He's Liliana in her get-up. Inquisitor, good to meet you. How's Redcliffe? How are things in Redcliffe, my lord? Blessedly quiet. The mayor conveys his greetings. Redcliffe remembers its savior. Uh, could I take a moment, your holiness? I had hoped to steal a moment of the divine's time. Very well. We'll continue this later, your perfection. Many are frightened of the Inquisition's power, but I will do all I can to allay their fears. How can I help? Is there anything I can do to make your job easier? Explore the grounds. Let yourself be seen. The delegates need to put a face to the legend. I have much to do, but let me say this. I may no longer be your spy master, but I am always here if you require. I'm glad you finally arrived, Inquisitor. The Crown's anxious for news. And your thoughts on Ferelden's position? The breach is long gone, yet Skyhold's army remains. Ferelden can't continue to ignore soldiers on its borders. I mean, I understand your fear. The Inquisition has grown. I can see how its presence might cause concern. Then you understand why we must demand a reduction of your military forces? A power without allegiance to either Ferelden or Orle? Even I see neither of our countries can let it rest. I won't keep you longer. We'll have words enough when the Exalted Council begins. Like, I can't say that I don't understand Ferelden's position, but at the same time, I hope they understand my position, which is that the threat is not over. Like, yes, the big breach is closed, but there's still lots of enemies. Case in point, we just got back from defeating an ancient god uh, named Hakan. <laughs> so the Inquisition is still needed, and I don't think we should disband entirely. But regardless, I just want to say how cool and weird it was to see Liliana in her divine outfit. That was quite a moment. This must be the Orlesian ambassador, Duke Cyril. All oh, and Dorian! Side, cool! Lord Parvis. The Inquisition support is not a thing to lose lightly. Which is why the Orlesian court is circling it with a net and collar? But you'll have to excuse me. I see an old friend I must greet. Inquisitor, how long has it been? Don't actually tell me. I despise feeling old. <laughs> it's good to see you, my friend. It's good to see you. You arrived ahead of me. I hope all's well. It's everything I expected. We've been spared the burden of surprise. Orle wants the Inquisition tamed, Ferelden wants it gone, the Chantry medals, and Tevinter sends but one ambassador. That's me, by the way. A reward for my interest in the South. Thankfully, Ambassador Pavis is a token appointment. Call on me as you like. It's so good to see him again, and I'm glad he's getting involved with Tevinter politics. He'll he'll Inquisitor. do good there. Duke Cyril Montfort, member of the Council of Heralds and Lord of Chateau Hain. I have long followed your work. It is extraordinary. Is that sentiment shared by the rest of the court? <laughs> of course. Ole wishes only to offer respectful guidance to the Inquisition. I mean, it's expected. We're powerful. The Inquisition's grown. It would be shocking if they didn't find us a threat. Yet you've started no major wars. The Inquisition is a very considerate rival. I've not forgotten Justinia's death. I had friends who perished at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. More than the good you have done, it is the good we may do together I don't wish to lose. Whatever happens, Inquisitor, I wish you well. Okay. 
I gotta say, as much as I was, you know, I have more of a personal connection with, with the uh, Ferelden ambassador due to the time spent with him in Dragon Age Origins, plus our time spent in Redcliffe, I actually appreciated Duke Cyril's, uh, from Orlais, opinion a bit more. He seemed more like, we like the Inquisition, whereas Ferelden approach was more, we are, <laughs> uh, you know, scared of you, so... Anyway, let's read this mail people have lying around. Scandalous gossip! Ooh. This unsigned note is creased, as if it had been secreted away in someone's pocket. Dearest Jay, I agree it is surprising that the Ferelden's come as equals, but the Exalted Council is in the heart of Southern Orlais. That cannot be lost on our neighbors. Empress Selene has stayed in Valroyo to appease a delegation of Navarans, or so her messengers say. It is obvious the Empress stays away to dodge the demands that she bring the Inquisition to heal. One would almost think that Selene believes they will find a way out of their bind. So strangely naive at her age. I mean, Selene owes us a great debt, so I don't think she wants to meddle as the TLDR. Dedication. This fountain was erected in commemoration of the end of the Civil War and the slaying of Tryphius by the Blessed Herald of Andraste, Inquisitor Talara Adar, in the 42nd year of the Dragon Age. Let the song of its water be as laughter. Let the cool of its stone be as memories gone. Dedicated by Her Imperial Majesty, Empress Selene, in memory of those who fell to protect and preserve the Orlesian Empire. Wow, how cool! This fountain is dedicated to me. It's so pretty. I like it. Wow. Alright, so I think we have caught up with everybody, although I say that and immediately I see Lilian over here, so perhaps we can chat with her a little it's bit more. Wild. Let's see. So many guys out in this place. Hi! Will you walk with me? The first time I came to the Winter Palace, I was only 18. I was dazzled. Such rich hangings, splendid marble columns, more golden lions than I could count. It's all still here, still bright, but I no longer see that same palace. You sound sad. And that makes you sad. It is easier on the heart to just see gilding. Now all I see are hands rub raw to make gold gleam, tears shed in the night over silk embroidery. Others overlook them and forget their pain, but I am divine and I cannot be blind. They seek to tear the Inquisition down. You feel it, no? Fear. 100% feel it. Before we get to that though, I just want to comment that this is why I like Liliana as the Divine so much. She genuinely does care for the little man. She's been there. Um, she wants equality. I, I just think her morals and her principles are, are just there. Plus, I just genuinely like her as a person. But anyway. Um, we probably know too much. And I'd fear anyone with our vault of secrets. Wouldn't you? It is not our secrets, nor our soldiers. There have always been spy masters in private armies. They are afraid of nothing so much as the hand that directs it all. Mine. Already your actions have begun to reshape Thedas. Your influence is felt everywhere. It was only a matter of time before they moved. I'm surprised it took this long. The Inquisition's time is coming to an end. Is that the Divine's order? Is that the decree of her perfection, Divine Victoria? That the Inquisition be dissolved? As Divine, it is my duty to think of Thedas and all our peoples. We set out to restore peace, and now peace is upon us. Some things can only be accomplished in shadow, without the trappings of power and the attention they bring. But whatever you decide, I will be honored to stand beside you. Interesting. I mean, it's my opinion that there are still things we need to do. As she mentioned, we can do things that other people cannot, especially when it comes to powers of gods and demons and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I do understand that the main issue, the breach, is closed. So I think it is fair to have a reduction of powers, absolutely. But I think there's still a place for us, and I guess that's what we're going to argue about now at the Exalted Council. Either way, very nice to catch up with everybody. I think we've done all of our 
catch up and it's ready I'm ready to begin the exalted council Thank you, Your Holiness. Now, Artigan, as to your concerns... The Inquisition established an armed presence in Ferelden territory. You outright seized Caer Bronach in Crestwood. Uh, it was a bandit stronghold. Yes, from bandits. Would you like us to give it back to them? Your help was appreciated two years ago, Inquisitor. Now order has been restored, yet you remain. Invading under pretext of restoring order is exactly what the Grey Wardens did to us centuries ago, and we exiled them. Okay, that was completely now different. the Inquisition is doing the same thing with Grey Wardens in their ranks. Yo, calm Your down. Your is ill-founded. The Grey Wardens have proven their worth time and again. Exactly. Of course Orle tolerates this interference. The Inquisition is the only reason Selene still has the throne. Rest assured, Tegan, the Empire of Orle will not stand idle if the Inquisition oversteps its bounds. Unlike Ferelden, however, Orle understands that these were the well-intentioned mistakes of a young organization. An organization in need of a guiding hand. Yours, no doubt. Pardon me, Inquisitor. Divine Victoria wishes to speak with you in private. Man, uh, Arl Tegan's really getting on my nerves here. <laughs> the goodwill that I had towards him, the excitement that I had at seeing him again, is fading away quickly. He is, for lack of better words, being a bit of a dick here. Um, all right. Please pardon me, everyone. My apologies. An urgent matter has come to my attention. Ambassador Montelier, can you handle this for a short while? I... of course, Inquisitor. This is highly irregular. Perhaps it would be best if we took a short recess. The guard said we should both see this. I believe she was correct. Whoa. The Canary Warrior in full armor. How did he get into the Winter Palace? Uh, what can you tell me? So what would the left hand of the Divine see when she looked at this? This is a warrior, not a spy. Part of the Antam, the Canary military. Most of his wounds come from a fight against someone using magic, but at least a few are from a blade. He was badly hurt, separated from his allies, and made it here before he died. But how? Well, this is not good. Do you think Bull might know? Would the Iron Bull know anything about this? I asked, and he is as surprised as we are. Since becoming Talvashov, he has had no contact with his people. He seems frustrated at not knowing more. Well, we should investigate. We need to find out what's going on. Can Josephine manage the diplomats while I look around? She will be fine. It's all speeches and posturing for the first few days anyway. I will extend the recess as long as possible. I will also have our friends ready themselves for battle if need be. You think that's likely? I think the Exalted Council may be more exciting than we expected. I love Liliana. <laughs> How many times can I say that today? I'm so happy that she's the Divine. This is certainly, uh... Not a great omen. A Kunari in full ceremonial armor. Here. Not a good look. Let's see what any of this has. Vivian in the last few years. Inquisitor, I, I fear I shall have no opportunity to meet with you prior to the Exalted Council at Halam Shural. The colleges and fraternities of enchanters are holding yet another round of elections in a few months, and I must be present to organize everything, or the Aquitarians and the Lacrosians will inevitably get drawn into the most passive-aggressive arguments over the number of ballot boxes and the arrangements of voting cards you can possibly imagine. On the last two occasions, when I could not be spared from my duties at the Imperial Court, the isolationists sealed themselves inside the debating area with ice walls in protest over some insult from a libertarian senior enchanter from Cumberland. I must, of course, convey the continuing appropriation of the Orlesian court, though I have no doubt dear Duke Cyril has already bored you to death with the Council of Herald's compliments by now. Cordially, Vivian. 
And Varric in the last few years. Okay, so we got some additional updates. We've already talked to everybody, but additional updates are always welcome. Inquisitor, greetings and salutations from beautiful Kirkwall. The sun is shining, the sea birds are screeching, and almost nothing in Hightown has fallen into a sinkhole and ended up in the sewers in over a month. The Red Lyrium cleanup in the gallows is going better than expected. Nobody misses having Meredith fused to the flagstones, eerily glaring at everyone. The city guard celebrated finally getting her out of there by holding a completely impromptu parade. Several low-town residents composed a song on the spot, with lyrics to the effect of Thank the Maker, the crazy cursed Templar is gone, which was remarkably catchy, despite, or maybe because of, the fact that it was mostly just swearing in tune. Even with all this stellar progress, it looks like I'm stuck here. Channels in the harbor were completely changed by falling debris a few years back, which led to a lot of ships getting wrecked coming and going, which only made things worse. And then we had rifts open, and weird glowing fade rocks appeared out there. Incidentally, thanks for closing the rifts. Now, the only hope for repairing the harbor is to send guys with pickaxes to clear the rocks. Ever try to hire miners who are also divers, Inquisitor? There aren't many, and even fewer are happy mining glowing shit from the fade. <laughs> this is going to take a lot of my coin to fix. Stop by the city sometime. We'll get in a game of Wicked Grace, please. This Viscount shit is boring me to death. From Varric. Varric never gets old, man. He says it like it is, and it's quite often hilarious. Here we have Cullen in the last few years. Cullen, word has spread from Denerim about the summit the Inquisition will attend. The news is half rumors, but with the representatives they say are going, it's clearly serious. And the details are probably not something you can put down in a letter. I will, however, look forward to more glowing descriptions about how much you love Orlesian parties. Ranson's here. His son insists I add hello call to his letter. He also insists it be hello and not hello. Your nephew is stubborn. How very familiar. Love, Maya. Sandra in the last few years. Inquisitor, I'm writing to you from the Hunterhorn Mountains, where I was successful in tracking down Seeker Emery. She was more shocked than most to hear of Lord Seeker Lucius's betrayal, as he was her mentor when she was just an initiate. But she is eager to help rebuild, and she has heard of a few other Seekers who might have been sent to Ravain. I still do not know how many of us yet remain, how many Lucius killed, but I know that we are recovering, and I know that we will be better this time. I confess I look forward to returning to Orlay next month. Once, I would have thought that impossible. Orlais was little more than the land of frustrating politics, excessive ornamentation, and responsibilities I did not want. But now that friends wait for me there, it is almost a home. From Cassandra. Whoa! I fixed that painting and got plus two strength. Okay. Guards are keeping back the uh, looky loos. You can't keep me out of here. Giving us time to investigate. What we got back here? Any clues? Oh, that's another expensive dog treat. <laughs> Not much of a clue. We got another chapter of Herd in High Town. Ooh, what Looks do we like have here? Down over the railing. Yeah, I see blood. Okay, more blood right there. Or blood, yep, he's, he definitely came this way. Aha, broken railing and an open window. Just what I need. Follow the trail of blood. Active alluvian? Oh god. If I'm going through it, I'm not going alone. Okay, so a Kunari warrior stumbled out of an active alluvian in the Winter Palace? This just got complicated. What do we have here? <laughs> Five random sapphires, okay. Are we going in? I guess we're going in. And we get to pick our team, which means it's time to get the gang back together. Dorian, Varric, and of course, Mr. Iron Bull. This is the crossroads. Morgan brought me here while showing me the Alluvians. It didn't exactly look like this, though. I guess we're coming in a different way. Blood Trail is leading down to this Alluvian. Judging by the bloodstains, we tried to get through here. What's wrong? That one doesn't like you? This mirror doesn't look broken, but it's inactive. Maybe there's a way to unlock it. Okay, let's look around.
What was an Illuvian doing in the Winter Palace? And a working one at that. Perhaps it was Morrigan's work from when she was working with the Empress? The blood trail leads to this mirror. Aha. Right. Let's see where this guy came from. This one's working. Let's go through. Elven, Elven ruins. Mountain ruins. I'm not sure we're even in Orlais anymore. Okay, the blood trail continues down this hallway. Aha! Another Kunari body. Another Kunari. Dressed like the one in the Winter Palace. He's Katashok, a foot soldier. Must have been in the same squad. Glad I brought Bull. Speaking of, I can listen to him over here. Oh, this is gonna be fun. The old team together again to kick some ass. <laughs> How about it, Katan? You're still doing nicknames? <laughs> nicknames are my thing, Tiny. It's a title of honor for the woman I love. Oh. I never expected you to be a romantic. Right? Uh, this was supposed to be about hitting things, remember? <laughs> I'm so glad the gag are back together. I love my boys. Bull, Varric, and Dorian. Just awesome. And having Bull here should be helpful, seeing as we're dealing with... Kunari. Whoa! Um... Where are we and what was that? And who are these people? And what happened to them? Scorch marks everywhere. This is the work of a mage. A powerful one. I can still feel the heat crackling. We need to find out why these Kunari were here. And who did this to them. Or do, and I bet the answers might lie behind this... Alluvian. There's so many of them. Okay. Where did this bring us? Over there. Kunari. If we want to know why they're here, we've got to get across to that island. What is this? A broken statue sits atop a pedestal. A broken Alluvian over there. And an active one down here. I guess we're just going to be Alluvian hopping here. The elves bound a spirit here. It feels old. Very old. What does it want? Listen to the Well of Sorrows. I think I know what to say. Armelana de Fabric. Ravas Viranaris. Amelathanas. Seemed to work. What did you say? It was part of a ritual. A secret greeting from those Van Harel trusted. If Mithal's Well of Sorrows knew this, were they close? Friends or... I'm not sure. Interesting. Okay, well, my Well of Sorrows knowledge came in handy. It's like we don't have to fight these guys or anything. Just spoke to them in Elven, and they allowed us to pass. Whoa, what's this? Wolf's Welcome. A wash of powerful magic carries an impression of welcome. Images flash by, Elven slaves fleeing to this place in ancient times, greeted by others who then tend their wounds. Words are not so much heard as felt. Ben Harrell bids you welcome. Rest, knowing the dread wolf guards you and his people guard this valley. In this place, you are free, and trusting us, you will never be bound again. That was like Balefire. It claimed this was a refuge for elven slaves. You mean the ancient elves kept slaves? Maker's breath. One more thing never to tell Daisy. This whole valley was a sanctuary created by the dread wolf, Fen Harel. Fen Harel? The Dalish elves' god of misfortune? AKA the Loki of the Dragon Age universe. Okay, let's see where this one leads. So it looks like the Alluvians are literally bringing us to different points around this valley. Which is cool. Whoa, look at the murals here on this wall. Very cool. Mm 
more ghosts. They don't want to talk to me though. Oh, and more dead bodies. More Kunari dead bodies Cuts specifically. Back. He was killed by surprise. This can't have happened too long ago. The blood's not even dry. What the hell were Kunari doing in an ancient elven sanctuary protected by the Dreadwolf? Here we go again. What a change of pace from the Winter Palace. A clear sky, a beautiful view, and yes, fields and fields of stripweed as far as the eye can see. Stripweed. Terrible stuff. Looks like grass, stings like a knife, and causes sores if you so much as brush against it. So, of course, everyone in Menrathus insists it makes a very decent tea. <laughs> okay. I'm just thinking, too, my whole gang is in armor. Can I put my armor back on right now? Oh, yeah, I sure can. Okay, we should probably do that just in case, you know, we come across uh, some battle. It is quite the beautiful view here. Wow. Getting the band back together. That's exciting. Don't tell me the Viscount of Kirkwall misses skulking around and shooting people. You've never been to the Viscount's keep, have you, Sparkler? Spend two hours there and you'll be glad to be shot at. <laughs> oh, I love all this party banner. That is ex excellent. All right. Through this, uh, well, examining this mural thing. Which presumably will lead to another alluvian. The promise of Fenharel. A wash of powerful magic carries a pang of hope. Images flash by. A man in wolf skin standing with a group of freed slaves, clasping one's arm in friendship. Words are not so much heard as felt. Fenharel has been falsely named a god, but is as mortal as any of you. He takes no divine mantle and asks that none be bestowed upon him. He leads only those who would help willingly. Let none be beholden but by choice. Ben Harrell helping former slaves as a mortal, not a god. Kind of curious that this guy had to specify he wasn't a god. Ordinary guy saves people, accidentally founds religion. Sounds a lot like the chant, actually. Ben Harrell sounds like quite the rebel. The old elven gods must have simply loved that. I love the insight from my guys. That's that's all great insight, actually. Leads us down into this structure. What is this place? Another mural here and here. The lies of the Avenurus. A wash of powerful magic carries a sensation of bitter fury. Images flash by, elven mages enslaving tens of thousands, making arrogant proclamations of godhood. Words are not so much heard as felt. The gods, our Luvenaris, claim divinity, yet they are not but mortals, powerful in magic, who can die as you can. In this place, we teach those who join us to unravel their lies. This claims the elven gods were just Evanuris, powerful Oops, sorry. but completely mortal mages. Whoever ran this place was trying to rebuild the slaves' confidence. Get rid of old propaganda. If that's true, Fen Harel was teaching these freed slaves the truth about these false gods. So this lines up with what Morrigan mentioned. If you remember back when we were in the Temple of Mithal, she mentioned that she wasn't 100% uh, convinced that the elven gods were gods at all, and that obviously history construes things differently. And this is kind of lining up with that, saying that the elven gods were not gods at all, but powerful ma mages who were, in fact, enslaving people. And if that's the case, well, that changes a lot of what we know about elven history. Anyway, let's get to this giant glowing thing. Anchor Discharge. The anchor now automatically generates focus over time. Discharge the accumulated focus by using the new ability in the battle menu. Oh, discharging the anchor makes your party briefly invulnerable. The anchor also glows brightly for a short, short time, lighting dark areas and revealing objects hidden there. Ah! Are you hurt? Interesting. That hurt! It felt like the anchor stung me. So we got some new... new power from the anchor? Whoa. 
There's something here that we can take. This looks like it fits into that pedestal by the broken bridge. Interesting. Okay, I guess now, uh... I'm gonna backtrack? Turn the weighted statue to the bridge. Of the package. I like that we can use it as a light source. Okay, time to backtrack. Whee! Testing out my Kunari knees. <laughs> here we are, back at the bridge, and we can place what we found in here. Ah, I was wondering what that did. Here's our bridge covered in seaweed, because presumably it was at the bottom of the lake. It's back up, and now we can come over here where we saw some active Kunari. They don't seem very active right now, but <laughs> maybe there's some others who, uh, who are alive. Kunari. Ah, right here. Oh, and they're aggressive. What the hell are you doing here, and what the hell do you want? It's Kunari versus Kunari. Me and Bull versus... Well, not Talvashoths like us. Actual followers of the Kun. Okay, you're down. So they weren't very friendly. Here is the Forgotten Sanctuary. Where there are spirits fighting against the Kunari. Interesting. What is going on here? A lot of them, too. A lot of Ben Hasroff agents. Just like what Bull used to be. Is that it? Okay. The new objective is to search for more information about the hostile Kunari. Which I've been looking to do this whole time. Speaking of hostile Kunari, here's some more. At least we've got the spirits on our side. They're helping us fight and not attacking us, so that's that's always good to have a few more allies in play. see these spearmen up here. I just noticed a bull running away. I was like, bull, where are you going? But he was getting a jump on these spearmen who are actually elite enemies. A little bit tougher to take down. Hopefully bull is climbing up the ladder to attack him head on. So is Dorian for some reason. I'm sure why he felt he had to be so close. Oh, Varric too! The whole gang is up on that platform for whatever reason. I will be staying down here, but... Alright, here we go. He exploded nicely. 
chunks of his flesh fell down. Inquisition on sight. No idea. They weren't Talvashoth, though. This might be a rogue group, but they think they're following the Kuhn. Good to know. We'll move past the chunks of that last guy. Let's see what we can find up here. Ooh, a big wolfy statue with a button. <gasps> Press. Well, I didn't do anything. Whoa, beautiful murals on the wall. What do we have here? That's Van Harel. Removing the face markings from a Dalish elf? Isn't this place older than the Dalish? Maybe the markings used to have a different meaning? Interesting. Okay. Also got some Veil Fire here. I can energize. Light all these braziers. Some more over here, too. Can I press the button now, maybe? Oh! I put them all out! Okay, that must mean there's an order to this. An order that we need to light things, perhaps. Ah, what is this? A little tablet here. The dread wolf keeps its gaze on the one light that illuminates the way forward. Okay. So, only this, the one that the dread wolf is looking at, should be lit. So, this one. And this one. Let's see if that works. Nope. <laughs> wow, I really thought I had it too. Okay. Maybe, oh, one of them's in shadow and one of them's not. Maybe that's the difference. So maybe it's just this one. Nope. Okay, maybe it's just this one. <laughs> We're trying the guess and check method here now. Oh, unless they mean what the wolf is looking at. Like, this literal wolf statue. He's looking at this one. Yeah! It was the wolfie! Alright guys, clearly we... We have a lot to explore here. Uh, we are only just getting started, I think, exploring this area and figuring out what the hell is happening. So I'm going to take a break right here, leave you guys hanging a little bit. So you'll have to come back and tune in next time to figure out what is going on with the Dread Wolf in the Kunari. I'm very excited to get some more answers. So thank you all so much for watching today's episode, and hopefully I'll see you guys back here soon for some more Trespassers. DLC.